Good to meet you people. My name is Apurva Mankad. I am uh, CEO of my company called Web Express. We are into supply chain and logistics for the last 10 years plus. And we have been associated with Advantis for the point of view of explaining the entire area of e-commerce and supply chain. So uh, let's start the session. Uh, I'm sure all of you are very much aware of e-commerce and what's happening. A lot of good sessions have happened. So while we talked about getting these 500 million people online and the technology which will help us to do that or the marketing strategy which may possibly get you there. But the biggest problem in e-commerce, of course, how will you make your goods reach them? And that's where the entire supply chain comes in. It is actually much more easier to spread an e-commerce initiative like an airline booking, for example, or a railway booking or cinema booking. Because what you get in result is an intangible. You get an SMS or you get an email which you can show at a theatre these days and just walk into the cinema hall. There is nothing to be delivered to you. And that's why what we call as uh, industry where you don't have to have any tangible to be delivered is much more easier to crack. And that's why the e-commerce industry in India for that is way bigger compared to the physical goods industry. But what we talk about e-commerce right now is of course something which will come to my home something which will come to my home in a physical package from some point. And that's why the entire world of supply chain comes in. So one of the biggest challenge today for e-commerce companies is going to be how are they going to make it possible to reach out to 500 million plus people in the country and in time with a product which does not lose its quality and integrity and is the product which you actually ordered online. A trailer of that of course is today available to you because all the urban areas you are able to get that. You order something online and it reaches you normally in three to four days or maybe five days of time and it reaches you in the same shape and the right product most of the time. There are of course instances of things going wrong. So let's understand how this entire e-commerce supply chain industry works and we will do that by taking case study of one of the leading companies in this particular area. This is a company which has got a very interesting story. Uh, it's a company by the name of GoJavas. It's one of the leading what we call as e-commerce only logistics company in India. Somewhere in 2012 when Jabong.com started <coughs> as a brand in India, they felt that they must have a division to control their logistics like so many other companies did at that point of time. And that's how they created this division within them called GoJavas. But over time they realized that it's a special entity and the core business of Jabong is to sell fashion material online and e-commerce is logistics is something which is not the main company should be worried about. And that's where a separate company was hived off called Quickdell Logistics and separately invested into by many investors and became a brand name called GoJavas. Today GoJavas delivers more than one and a half lakh on an average consignments per day and uh, they serve more than almost 6,000 to 6,500 PIN codes in India of about 17,000 good PIN codes that you can serve as far as India is concerned. And they have got more than 8,000 plus bikers who go every day from various locations that they've got, come to your home and deliver stuff. So this is a generation of companies which we call as new generation e-commerce logistics companies. Companies which did not exist before e-commerce boom. They've not been around for 25 years, they've been around for only maybe 5, 6, 4, 7, 8 years. And they've been serving the e-commerce market mainly. Now, if you look at the graph from a growth point of view, you will notice that the growth in e-commerce for this company has been very stupendous. From somewhere near to zero in 2012, every year they had almost a 200%, 300% growth and today they stand at almost a level of more than one and a half lakh consignments being delivered every day. In Diwali last year, they touched a peak of 3.6 lakh deliveries on a single day. 360,000 in any given day and that's a very massive volume for and that's only that's not the only company while we are taking the case of this particular company and that's not the only company the industry itself did very very well. So imagine managing 360,000 deliveries and you are still catering to only a small percentage of the e-commerce market. Probably about 10 to 12 percent of market share is what Gojavas will hold or was holding at that point of time. Equations of course change in the industry and uh, new players keep on emerging. Which means if you want to grow to a much larger level of 3x, 4x, 5x, obviously your capability to deliver will have to go up much, much more. As I was sharing with you, there is a new generation of companies which have come up. 
So there is a company by the name of, for example, Dotzot, which is a division of DTDC and exclusively focusing only on e-commerce logistics. Then you have a company called Delivery, you have a company called Ecom Express, a company by the name of Express Bees. In fact, recently both these companies were in news because Alibaba has shown a lot of interest to invest in this space. It's very simple logic that if you want to control e-commerce, you must control logistics. Because apart from delivering the product, what exactly do you do as e-commerce company? You have a fantastic website, you have a great catalog, you've got a good vendor base which will supply the material and I'm sure, you know, a very strong advertisement and marketing engine. But unless you don't control logistics, the only experience the customer actually has of you is when that package comes to his home and when he opens it and that is the moment of truth. Unlike your traditional retail companies where you have a shop, you have mannequins, you've got some other things going on, you've got AC and you've got food, so many other things a retailer can throw in into his mall or his shop to attract you. Whereas an e-commerce company, whatever attraction they give you apart from discounts, ultimately what counts is <coughs> the delivery to you. And that's why these companies understood the importance of e-commerce delivery as compared to normal traditional delivery and were specially formed. You may ask a question, why? Is it that India did not have logistics industry before e-commerce? Is it that before that people did not get things delivered? We had courier for so many years. We send an envelope from one place anywhere in the country to the other. It does reach. Unfortunately, that industry was not very well geared to serve the e-commerce industry in many which ways. Let me explain how. If you took it, look at a very traditional courier company or look at your postal department, typical time they will take to turn around an envelope from Mumbai to Delhi is seven days. They will first take envelopes from a lot of people. They will go to a post office or a branch office, sort it all because you may pick up everything from let's say Andheri West, but all the envelopes picked up in Andheri West do not go to Delhi East. Some go to Chennai, some go to Kolkata. So you have to do a sortation. This sortation then, you know, gets done across the city. It goes to one particular point where separate bags are created for Delhi, Chennai, etc. Something which is going to Delhi may not land at Delhi, it may go to Ludhiana. So you have this entire business of sortation etc to be done and that takes time and doing that particular requires a lot of manpower, a lot of effort and India being a relatively cheaper country for labor, most of this work was done manually. So the sortation will actually be done by a human being reading it, Delhi, Mumbai. If you go to a courier office, they've got something called as a pigeon hole, right? Many, many small boxes and there are people who work there for 15, 10, 20, 30 years who are expert at it, you give them a box of envelopes and like machines they will read and sort, 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 sort and put into that pigeon hole. And that human being is like fantastic. He's been doing it for 15 years, 20 years and he knows how to do it. He literally has those pigeon holes mapped into his brain. He looks at Delhi, I say, Chennai and it falls into the right slot kind of thing. So we typically replace machines with human beings and the human beings who work for many, many years become like machines. But that doesn't really help in e-commerce because one, you've got different size of parcels, right? And you're competing with the retail industry where you can go and buy something next door and get it right now. So seven days is something which is not acceptable, especially in metro markets where consumer has a lot of choice. Most importantly, many of these companies did not really understand the concept of cash on delivery because a courier comes to you, delivers the envelope and there he goes. Job done, right? Nothing to be collected. Unless it's a money order or some, uh, you know, kind of acknowledgement required courier where he will wait and then you will sign something which he will take and, you know, go back. He will just give it very quickly run away. Here you're talking about delivering something which is expensive and you're supposed to collect the money of that expensive item back in terms of cash on delivery. We will of course talk more about cash on delivery as we go ahead. But it's a reality that cash on delivery is a must in e-commerce, without which you cannot go forward. So these companies realized that today's logistics companies are not much geared towards it. Secondly, most of them already had business. So when I am starting my e-commerce company, I'm just one e-commerce customer for you. Today we are talking about industry being $20 billion and you know, 5 billion and going to 20 billion, big numbers. But in 2008-9, when Flipkart started, almost every logistics company showed them the door because they demanded a service level which nobody will commit. They will tell them, Flipkart, I will deliver your material from Bangalore to Delhi in anywhere from 7 to 10 days. 
and I cannot even guarantee that. And if I am not able to deliver in 10 days for whatever reasons, I will not pay you a penalty. And if you want to find out where your package is, why don't you go to my website and check it out. If Flipkart wants to ship even 10,000 shipments every day, do you really feel they will put up a manpower? We'll go to probably website of FedEx and you know, Aramex and Blue Dart, punch in one by one, take the data, put it into some Excel sheet. And then when you call from your home saying, where is my package? Look up that Excel sheet and then give you the answer. Will it work? It would never work. And Flipkart realized that very early on that the current logistic state of India will not serve them. So Flipkart formed its own company called eCart. And they said, we will do our own logistics. Taking a cue from that, all these so many other players also came into the market to serve this particular industry. What they do, how they do, we'll talk about it a little later. Today, if you look at the market share, there are fundamentally following categories of players. There are, of course, the companies which are courier and logistics which got into e-commerce, seeing the action and the amount of business. So Blue Darts of the world and Aramex of the world and FedEx of the world obviously put their act together once they saw the growth coming in and they put the systems and processes and they are competing in the market. They account for a fairly large chunk of e-commerce players. Then there are what we call as captive e-commerce logistics companies. eCart, for example, is a captive of Flipkart. Now, recently, they've started talking about giving business or taking business from non-Flipkart customers, but that will remain a small percentage. Most of the business will still come from their own parent, which is Flipkart. Gojawa's, the example that we have talked about, was a captive of Jabong and now Snapdeal. So put together, these two will account for majority of the business for Gojawas. That's why they are called captive, e-tail captives. And then there are what are called as independents, delivery, e-com express, express bees, ship rocket, many of them who are formed basically to serve the e-commerce industry. You go to them and say, I want this envelope to be delivered to my sister in Delhi. They'll say, thank you. We don't do that business. They don't do retail. They don't do envelopes. They don't do business for non-e-commerce companies. They are focused only on e-commerce companies because they do feel as their strategy that there is a huge growth left in the e-commerce market. Why should we look at anything else? Of course, those assumptions are changing today. But then even after all that, there is a pie chart, which in a way indicates that FedEx and Blue Dart today control almost half of the e-commerce delivery market. And the remaining half is being controlled by other people like Dotzot or Gati or others. Of course, Depending on whom you ask in this industry, numbers are always difficult to confirm, right? Because there are no really fundamental research done in this logistics industry overall and in India. Because market share information is available mainly from anecdotal evidence by calling suppliers or by calling, you know, companies like e-commerce and they will tell you. There is no really a government number available for such things. Can't really say it's a great thing. So you have a question. So when you're talking about this market share as of today, Mm -hmm. uh, the entire e-commerce uh, percentage is still less, uh, is still figuring in that 24%? For example, e-card, Java's, e-com, delivery, and all these uh, guys are actually catering to the e-commerce side. So, uh, e-commerce businesses. So, are they figuring in that 24%? Yes. So, which means uh, Blue Dart and FedEx are still serving uh, the market. Uh, so, courier and other logistics. Uh. So, this is the market share of only the e-commerce logistics. Within that, Blue Dart and Aramex and others are significant players. One of the reasons is that they always were present. Though their service levels were not good, but they were the only people present. So, you had to go to them. They have very strong, large networks, which they are able to leverage much faster. Whereas, everybody else is ramping up the network. For example, Gati is around for 25 years. Right, Blue Dart, 25 years. FedEx in India, in FedEx form, maybe about eight years, but in different form as AFL, for example, which is what they acquired, 25 years plus. So the number of branches they've got, number of people they've got is very large. So for them, it's very easy. The problem was that they were not very, very open to do a customized service for e-commerce players. So these new players, upstarts came in like eCart or a GoJavas or a Dotzot or an eCom. And they changed the service level and captured 50% of the market. And that made, obviously, the traditional players change their game. So Dotzot, for example, is being counted as a part of courier logistics company because it's a division of DTDC. And DTDC realized that in their own setup, maybe they are not able to meet the needs of an e-commerce customer. So they invite, they formed a separate company called Dotzot to focus exclusively on e-commerce deliveries, thereby improving the service level, providing certain 
facilities and contracts which only e-commerce companies will need. But that doesn't mean that the traditional logistics companies are out of this market. They also control a good amount of market. But then you will also notice that only the top two people like Blue Dart and uh, you know, Aramex and uh, you know, FedEx are the people who are controlling good amount of market. A very large number of traditional logistics companies are excluded from the e-commerce market today. That also will change. One of the reasons why these companies also dominated is the way the entire e-commerce supply chain is formed. Let's understand how that supply chain is formed now. 